Welcome back, and we are shifting gears, moving into our second topic for today as we find out more about what's happening with the Association of Protected Areas Management Organization, APAMO. Joining us on set, we have Akila Flores, who is the Communications and Marketing Officer for APAMO. In the middle, we have Leon Dawson, who's the manager of the Community Baboon Sanctuary Office. And on the end, we have Brioni Sigiri, who's the treasurer for the Friends of Swallow Key. Good morning Good and morning. welcome. Good morning. Good morning. It's a pleasure. So, Akila, let's start off by talking about the work of APAMO. Okay. So, APAMO, we are a non-governmental organization, mm -hmm. and we're also an umbrella association for several conservation NGOs and community-based organizations. Yeah. Our members range from NGOs such as Belize Audubon Society, TASA, Program for Belize, to smaller CBOs, mm -hmm. community-based organizations such as Community Baboon Sanctuary, the Rio Blanca Man Association, and um, Friends of Swallow Key. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we represent our members on various boards and technical committees. We also mm -hmm. um, assist them with capacity building, and we're also looking to assist them with um, accounting services as well as, as well as marketing services. Yeah, yeah. Now, at, at Umbrella Organization for all these different groups where, yes, the uh, natural environment is paramount, but they do have very different issues. If you're talking about what the community baboon sanctuary faces versus um, issues in the Ho Chan Marine Reserve, for example, um, they'd be very different. How do you, how does the organization ensure that it's meeting the needs of all these different entities? That's where our executive council would come in, mm -hmm. and we um, make sure we keep close communication with our CBO members and the boards. For instance, Ms. Yeah. Brianna is a part of the board, so whatever yeah. issues and concern they face, we receive their problems and we take it to the ministry because we're also in very close relationship with the Ministry of Forestry, Fisheries and Sustainable Development. Mm -hmm. Brioni, talk to us about it from your perspective. Um, as a board member and a member of Friends of Swallow Key, we basically make sure that we assist in every possible way in um, monitoring some the NGOs and the CBOs, mm -hmm. also assist them in technical stuff to ensure that they are functioning well and make sure that they have the added support because most of these organizations are run by boards which are voluntary. Mm -hmm. So they definitely need that, um, that strong support from the, from the umbrella yeah. um, of Palma. Yeah. And Leon, let's talk about the Baboon Sanctuary's relationship with the Palma and, and, and even just some of the stuff that you guys have been up to there. Okay, no problem. Um, APAMA has been very influential um, in aiding the community of Baboon Sanctuary to sustainable um, development and to allow us to um, be financially stable. Um, APAMA has aided us in several projects, um, community development, building our tourism sector because the community of Baboon Sanctuary um, focus on five main goals, which is community development, tourism, research, education, and Follow their uh, summer program. So, yeah. Apama has aided us in every one of those um, sectors Area. already. Um, so far, they have developed different. Um, they have aided us in developed signs mm -hmm. throughout. Um, we have signs in Barrel Boom, Hattieville, which Apama um, placed for us. Bathroom facilities on the trail, so tourists don't have to come all the way back to our facilities to use the bathroom. Mm -hmm. They could use the restrooms right on the trails. They have also aided us in marketing, um, promoting um, our tours, expanding yeah. via website, Facebook, um, and all different social media social media outreaches. Speaking on <coughs> tourism individually, how has the Baboon Sanctuary been performing? I, I gather and this is my opinion here, that it may not perhaps be as popular a site as other places in the country. Is that correct? Or it, if it is, how has the community baboon sanctuary been growing? Well, actually it has been growing exponentially recently. Um, for this month, approximately per month, we get around 
in the high season around over a thousand visitors a month that is fairly well um in that area it is very popular it's one of the most popular tours in the bell rave yeah. people love to come and see the black holler monkeys they love the interaction because it's not only a uh, you go and see the black holler monkeys you learn about medicinal plants about the culture of yeah. belize we do cultural presentation so when you come to the community baboon sanctuary you don't come to just see holler monkeys so that is one reason why we have um we, why we attract cruise passenger overnighters because we also offer homestays where guests come and stay with a family and they interact with them learn about the folklore the history of the Belize river valley so it is something bigger than just the community than just coming to see um Paul and Monkeys. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the Friends of Swallow Key for a moment. And uh, of course, uh, you are tasked with uh, protecting the manatee, right? Yes, we're tasked with protecting the manatees. Um, Friends of Swallow Key is uh, co managers mm -hmm. along with Forestry Department. Mm -hmm. And we protect um, the sanctuary that lies just in front of Belize City, approximately three to five minutes away. Yeah. Some mangrove islet in the middle, it's called Swallow Key. And that's where the manatees are known to nurture their calves. Yeah. Um, it's also a highly trafficked area. It's a traffic area, mm -hmm. but once we have um, the security in place, mm -hmm. and that's what our project is mainly um, with this multi-purpose grant through APAMO, mm -hmm. has given us an opportunity to motivate all three communities, the ABC communities, which is Ambergis Key, Belize City, and Key Cocker. Mm -hmm. And within this grant, we have motivated these communities and our stakeholders yeah. to have donated a new ranger station because we haven't had a oh. ranger station in, wa in a while. It was destroyed in the last hurricane. Uh -huh. So with voluntary efforts and kind contributions from our stakeholders, we have built um, a new ranger station and with the backup or the platform of this um, grant fund that we have, um, it's a multi-purpose grant fund through mm -hmm. PAC, um, and it's given to the APAMO members. We have now um, purchased um, water testers, um, cameras for photo recognition, mm -hmm. and what we're doing is we have hired um, our um, sales manager, for a base office in Key Cocker, which will sell and promote um, Belize, Key Cocker, and Swallow Key Wildlife Sanctuary as a destination or a tourism um, tour. Okay. Other than that, at the station itself, we want to motivate um, the community at large and the tourists that are visiting us because we're getting a lot of educational tourism which means that the tourists that visit us want to be motivated in being a part of the things that are actually happening at Swallow Key. Mm -hmm. For many years, people would have visited and only sit in the boat and watch the manatee from the boat. Yeah. Because it's a sanctuary, there's not, um, you cannot swim with them or get in the water with them. So now, we're gonna use these equipment that we have um, acquired through this grant, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have um, circuits within the park, whereby um, our guests itself can have an opportunity to assist us in monitoring, yeah. in protecting manatees, and also to do water quality testing. Excellent. Now, we, we were facing some challenges in uh, getting boats to respect uh, what are considered no-wake zones, and we've seen more and more boat incidents with, with manatees. How do you find that this uh, additional funding and equipment that you've garnered will help to address that or even the ranger station um, it will help with security because once there is not security presence people will definitely take advantage of the situation yeah. one two this funding or the base funding has given us an opportunity to also acquire a second project through GEF SGP mm -hmm. and this one we will um, do training within the communities okay. of the users and also to encourage um, like-minded people in protection of manatees, mm -hmm. which means it's gonna be an education form training okay. so that people could learn how to act, how to drive when they're in the vicinity, when they're um, manatees. Now, talk to us from the funding aspect and being able to assist the organizations with getting access to funds. Okay, well, the famous thing there is strength in numbers. So 
collectively, APAMO is made up of 14 different organizations. And we apply for projects, grants, mm -hmm. um, which will target specific CBOs. So this multi-grant project yeah. is targeting five CBOs. Two are here today. Yeah. And um, the funds are dispersed via APAMO. Mm -hmm. So we are in charge of the disbursements, and we disperse um, as needed. Yeah. Needs yeah. Be. And tell us about uh, what you plan to use the funds for. Well, um, currently, like I said, the funds for this multi um, this multi grant, mm -hmm. we used it for the development of the restrooms on the trail and signage. Oh. Um, um, there, there's also some fund for to ensure that even after the project is over, there is still funding to keep us on our feet during the slow season and um, yeah. ensure that we have funding to keep the doors open. Yeah. yeah. What are the other three CBOs that have received funding from APAMO? The other three CBOs <coughs> are the Rio Blanca Man Association in Santa Elena. Um, Toledo, they mm -hmm. co-manage the Rio Blanca National Park. We also have Mayfro Bocawina Environmental Development Group, which is oh. in Silk Grass, which co-manages um, Mayflo Bacawina National Park, and we have Staka, Sustainable Tourism and Conservation Association in the Valley Community Steadfast, which manages the Billy Bacarier National Park. And that's why it's important for us to try and integrate ecotourism into these parks because they are heavily reliant on external funding and grant funding. Yeah. So tourism is a guaranteed source of revenue and income, and um, it will also provide jobs for the surrounding communities. Now, how do you find the balance, though, between having people come in to access what is a pr protected area, but not causing damage and leaving a, a footprint uh, that, that you didn't want there in the first place, whether it's bringing in boats, more boats, or people moving. I mean, we know how people are with garbage, with not respecting uh, the nature around them. How do you balance it? Well, um, for us, we have our maintenance um, guy that cleans the trail and ensure that Every, the trails are clean and the yard is clean, every, yeah. um, the street side every, everywhere is clean. We also have the Community of Abun Sanctuary Youth Environmental Club. So this, is a, this, this club comprises of youths that make, because the Community of Abun Sanctuary comprises of seven communities, mm -hmm. so we have youths from those seven communities that ensure that each community is clean, the bus stop area is clean. Um, in terms of protecting the habitat, yeah. we don't encourage feeding of the holy monkeys so you go you go in you view but you don't touch because you don't know what we can give them what they can give us okay we don't encourage feeding either because if you feed a holy monkey they may come down from the from the trees cross the road get knocked down by yeah. a car or get um, um attacked by a dog mm -hmm. so we don't encourage feeding at all no feeding no touching so and that, people respect that yeah they do the yeah. or guides um promote that okay they explain that from the beginning that we don't encourage feeding or touching of the holy monkeys so that's how we protect them and the environment. At the heart of it is a, it's a conservation effort, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, yeah. right? In terms of not only giving them these guidelines, but for them to walk away with an imparted knowledge of what conservation in the respective context means. Sure. Um, for follow, Swallow Key Wildlife Sanctuary, um, I must say that um, from the concept, it is a sanctuary, mm -hmm. which yeah. means that um, chocolate and the board of directors has sat down, thought about it, and has mm -hmm. set up different regulations along with, with the National Protected Areas Act for sanctuary. So um, because it was three communities that utilized this area as a tourism, a tour destination, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have set up um, certain um, rules mm -hmm. whereby Engines are, uh, engines are turned off at the, at the entrance of the park. Oh. You can only pull in. There's only a specific size of boat that is allowed within the sanctuary. Customers are not allowed <coughs> to get into the water with the manatees. Photo recognition is only can be done if you're putting your cameras on a pole in the water. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, there's no feeding allowed. Mm -hmm. And for many years, people have respected that to the point that I have I've had the experience over the years that people from San Pedro would have visited the park and they would call me, Miss Bunny, 
did you know blah 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 went through the park too fast and it's it's normal and yeah. it's it's encouraged within yeah. all the tour the tour companies yeah. because this is one of their pride and joy this is one of the only strong sanctuaries that you can find within this vicinity that protects yeah. an endangered species, the manatees. Now, Aki, okay, like tell us some of the other innovative projects coming out of the, the other organizations that have been funded. Okay, well, we can start all the way down south at Rio Blanco. Um, they're developing a medicinal trail that um, complements the hammock bridge they have on the large waterfall. Yeah. Yes, so that's one great project. Um, the Mayflo Bokawina National Park. Um, they have upgraded their lighting in the Welcome Center. They have also improved the bathroom facilities, um, some of the trails. And then we move on to Billy Bakarir National Park. Mm -hmm. The unique thing about the Billy, Billy Bakarir National Park is that the water system in the nature reserve provides fresh water to all the homes in the community. Yeah. Yes. So um, we've been working along with them to upgrade the facilities, to upgrade the nature trails. They have also um, improved uh, a tower, so you can go on top of the tower and you can see all the way up to the Caribbean Sea. Wow. Their office um, is in progress and the bathroom facilities as well. Okay, all right. And what's, uh, what's the, the scope of the... Um, the project itself in terms of working with the, your your organizations to help to enhance ecotourism I'm sure this is only one step in the process yes this is one step in the process um, we are looking to implement a mechanism whereby we at the office can establish a business center mm -hmm. that will assist these CBOs with accounting marketing okay and um, business development. For instance, we are, in, we are working in um, developing a protected, a protected areas guide, a Palma Visitors Guide, that will be marketed similar to the Belize Destination um, mm -hmm. magazine. Oh, nice, but just ecotourism. Spot. Just ecotourism mm -hmm. and protected That's cool. areas. That's cool, all right. Well, thank you for coming in and telling us, uh, providing this update on the great work that you're doing. And, uh, you know, you mentioned something earlier, and I think it is important. While it may be slow season for tourism, it's a great time for Belizeans to go out and see these sites for themselves. What's the flow like for both of you for Belizeans to go visit the sites? Well, for us, Belizeans normally come on the weekends. So for the yeah. weekends, we have, we know that we will get families coming in from all over Belize. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, we had um, the guy that, that does the video that does it that has that do some video in um, Belize Mekwe girl something uh -huh. like that yeah he came in and he did a, did a video of the CBS so oh. um, that was one that was good for us for publicity um, but uh, no, we have school trips BS yeah. um, Grace Primary Holy Redeemer they come every year to the CBS so we did when June and Ju uh, May and June is when we look forward for school children from all over Belize to come yeah. For our slow season, we are utilizing this time so that we can actually get a uh, uh, touch base with all the tour guides and tour operators uh -huh. that use the park and we're enhancing what they know about the park, about protection of manatees. And likewise, we're gonna um, start our second project which flows into 2019. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing training with them about um, water testing and okay. um, also photo recognition of manatees. Nice. All right, well, thank you for coming in and keeping us updated. Thank you, it was a pleasure. We're gonna go ahead and take a break and when we come back, we'll be talking about national entrepreneurship